Good morning, everybody. The House Judiciary Committee will come to order. Um, Madam Clerk, will you please take attendance? Chair Breen. Present. Representatives Edwards. Present. Carter. Hope. Here. Arbit. Here. Devendorf. Here. Hoskins. Here. Cernoglu. Here. <coughs> Pink. Here. Wenzel. Here. Wozniak. Here. Altman. Here. Johnson. Here. Madam Chair, you have 12 members present. You do have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And I have a motion from Representative Edwards to approve and adopt the minutes from the previous meeting. Thank you. Those are approved and adopted. Uh, today, we are going to be voting out one bill from the treatment court package. We're going to take a little bit of time to put some guardrails around the three other bills. So we'll be voting out the bill on family treatment courts. We will also be taking testimony on some riveting bills regarding the probate code and the EPIC, which is Estates and Protected Individuals Code. And I'm sure everybody looks forward to learning more about our, our probate system. And we are going to start with voting on, we're going to take up House Bill 4522. We have here Judge Harvey Hoffman supporting the bill from the Michigan Association of Treatment Court Professionals. Nathan Triplett from the State Bar of Michigan also supporting the bill. Heath Lowry uh, opposing HB 4522 uh, from the Michigan Coalition to End Domestic and Sexual Violence. And supporting the bill, not wishing to speak, Sam Gibson from the Michigan Association of Counties. We do have a substitute for House Bill 4522. I will take a motion from Representative Hope to adopt the H1 sub. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Chair Breen. Aye. Aye. <coughs> Representatives Edwards. Yes. Yeah. Carter. Yes. Hope. Yes. Arbit. Yes. Devendorf. Yes. Hoskins. Yes. Cernoglu. Yes. Fink. Yes. Wenzel. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Altman. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Madam Chair, you have 13 yeas, zero nays, zero pass. The substitute is adopted. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I will now take a motion from Representative Devendorf to report House Bill 4522 as sub H1 with recommendation. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Chair Breen. Aye. Representatives Edwards. Yes. Carter. Yes. Hope. Yes. Arbit. Yes. Devendorf. Here. Yes. Hoskins. Yes. Cernoglu. Yes. Fink. Yes. Wenzel. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Outman. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Madam Chair, you have 13 yeas, zero nays, zero pass. House Bill 4522 is reported <coughs> with recommendation as substitute H1. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you, committee. We will now be moving to uh, take testimonies in House Bills 4416 through 4419. Testimony from myself, Representative Filler, as well as Mark Kellogg and Nathan Pawowski. And right now we are going to go at ease. The committee will come to order. Thank you, Madam Clerk, or Madam Chair. I'm now just, we, we don't have a lot of attorneys in the House, but uh, for those who aren't familiar, we have a probate court. Probate courts have exclusive legal and equitable jurisdiction over matters relating to the settlement of a deceased person's estates. There's also jurisdiction over other issues or individuals to include proceedings under the mental health code. And we know that going through probate can be uh, tedious, expensive, complicated, 
I, I see some people already, their eyes are glazing over. Uh, we are not going to go into a deep dive on this, but just for basic background information, in 1998, or about there, Michigan enacted EPIC, Estates and Protected Individuals Code. It governs matters pertaining to the administration of estates of, dece of deceased and protected persons. Protected persons are people who by reasons of their age or a physical impairment cannot manage their own affairs. They may need a guardian or a conservator. EPIC helps to streamline many processes and they help set thresholds that will allow people to handle certain aspects of an estate or financial matters without going through court every time. Um, for those of us who do practice law, uh, we typically uh, get very well versed in certain areas. I know Representative Wozniak has a lot of expertise in this area, and I'm sure the burning question in many people's minds is, does EPIC overlap with the rule against perpetuities? And if you have questions about that, I encourage you to reach out to Representative Graham Filler as he has expressed a deep uh, affection for that particular rule. Um, I'm going to just give a very brief overview of the two bills I have in the package and then throw it to Rep Filler. Uh, mine deals with uniform transfers to minors. Um, under the UTMA, a personal representative may make a transfer to another adult or a trust company as custodian for the benefit of a minor. And the reason why these changes are needed is because, again, this act was done in 1998. There have been many, many changes since then, including inflation. So uh, in a nutshell, the, um, if the transfer exceeds $10,000 in value, the transfer must be authorized by a court. Uh, the other bill I have has allows a surviving spouse or heir to petition the Secretary of State uh, to transfer the title of a watercraft or a boat outside of probate and the value of that, of that uh, boat or yacht or whatever it may be cannot exceed the total value amount of $300,000 for two years and that includes a cost of living adjustment. So this will allow people to take care of some estate matters without the time and expense of going through probate. Again, these are very technical fixes, but I'm going to throw it to Representative Filler to talk about his two bills. Thank you. And I know now I lost the bet because people are going to ask me about the rule against perpetuities. It's a big issue. Um, all right. Uh, unanimous out of the House last term. Um, this was the Michigan probate bar section's number one focus um, because they felt like EPIC needed to be modernized. So I know it's boring, but you need to update definitions. You need to adjust allowed payment accounts, amounts, I'm sorry, to take inflation into consideration, and it will give greater protection to vulnerable adults. Um, so that's the basis of it, and it is a massive bill because EPIC is a massive piece of the law. And so um, I ask for your support. And uh, we have Mark Kellogg, who's going to get into some of the technical details from Fraser. And thank you, Mark, for your help. All right, thank you. Um, it's my uh, pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, my name is Mark Kellogg. As I indicated, I'm the current chair of the probate and estate planning section of the State Bar of Michigan and a private practice attorney with the firm of Fraser Trebilcock here in town. I'm here to testify in support of House Bills 4416 through 4419. These bills, uh, as indicated, basically update and modernize our laws based on probate practitioners' past 22 years of experience with the Estates and Protected Individuals Code and related acts. I'll just summarize uh, what uh, these bills will do. Uh, they will update financial thresholds set in the law and subject additional thre thresholds to inflation adjustments. The effect of most of these thresholds changes uh, is that citizens and lawyers will not have to file probate motions and petitions quite as often. Again, it's been 22 years and the amounts in there should be increased. Uh, and again, I think it makes things easier for the probate court and the clerk's office at, uh, at, in the, with regard to pr the probate court. Uh, create standby uh, guardianship to ensure that protected individuals are not endangered by a guardianship gap on account of their guardian's illness, absence, or death. Clarify and improve notice rules that can impact the administration, modification, and termination of trust. 
modernize trust disclosure rules to allow trust to be administered on a confidential basis for a limited period to make our state competitive with jurisdictions like Alaska, Delaware, New Hampshire, Ohio, South Dakota, Tennessee, and Wyoming. Improve the enforcement of attorneys' rules of professional conduct by voiding inappropriate gifts included in estate planning documents and other instruments prepared by a lawyer and uh, make numerous technical fixes and improvements. For example, clarifying ambiguous statutory definitions, clarify, clarifying the circumstances under which a court may reopen an estate, adopting modernized versions of the pet trust and purpose trust rules, and confirming that certain specialized Michigan trusts can be used for estate and gift tax planning purposes. I will note this is the third time the technical improvements have been considered by the legislature. The probate section certainly uh, appreciates the uh, members for their consideration and support. One other item, the probate and estate planning section is a voluntary membership section uh, comprised of 3,446 members. And this is a, uh, the position of the section only and not the state bar, just to clarify that. I'd be happy to answer any questions, and thank you again for your time. We do have someone on Zoom. Hello, my name is Nathan Pivarsky. I am also a member of the section and uh, led the committee that drafted and collated uh, this legislation in collaboration with the sponsors over the years. I'm simply here to answer questions if they may arise. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions yet? No, we do not have any questions. The committee will go at ease. The committee is back. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kellogg and Mr. Nathan Porowski for testifying. Um, we do have cards from them in favor of the bills. I have Mark Kelly from the probate section also, oh sorry, Mark Kellogg, sorry. yeah, you already testified. We have Patricia Herndon from the Michigan Bankers to, uh, supporting the bill, not supporting the bills, not wishing to speak. Um, Melissa Horsty from the Michigan Department of State supporting the bills, not wishing to speak. Supporting them specifically 4417 and 4419. And I will note that we um, are still going to work on these bills a little bit between now and our next committee meeting. Some technical changes are being discussed, and we will be hopefully voting these out when we meet next. We will not be meeting next week, but we will be convening the week after. Uh, seeing no additional questions, no further business before the committee, we stand adjourned. <laughs>